up, Dre? They took man. It's your boy, Dre. Roll to 100K, 100K, Dre. Then I got that out of the way. I got something to say. Hey, man. Say, man. On today's video, it says, Rappers' Most Emotional Interviews. You telling me the gangsters out here in the world crying? The people that talk about murder, murder, kill, kill, like they're crying in interviews? You feel me? The people that's like you killing everybody? No, I'm playing. Hey, but look, man, I feel like this, bro. I ain't gonna drag it. I hope I don't see nobody that I really, really, really look at as a gangster that be out here really popping shit. You feel me? On this bitch crying, bro. You feel me? Because I'm gonna have to look at you a different type of way, folks. Like, you know what I'm saying? Pick who you wanna be. You gonna be a gangster today or you gonna be emotional tomorrow? Which one you gonna be doing? You can't be out here big building. You feel me? <laughs> nah, but look, I ain't gonna talk too much, man. It's your first time watching. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? Also, hit that like button for me, man, because y'all know 2024, we all can blow. Don't be no hater. If that's not you, let's get right into the video. One rapper broke down crying about their dead homies during an interview, and another nearly died on IG Live from being too high. These are rappers. Mo this nigga said somebody almost died on IG Live from being too high. I ain't never heard nobody, I'm too high, I'm about to die. You feel me? I, done, I, I got some homeboys that smoke lit. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But, nigga, you so high, you about to die? Boy, how high was, How high do you need to be? You feel me? Emotional interviews and moments. And we got to start with Kodak Black during his interview with Zias. Where they linked up with Kodak to... Re I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Kodak Black scared me, bro. You feel me? Like, I ain't, like, scared of him. Like, physically, we getting that blended. But I'm saying, as far as me, like, I couldn't be Kodak Black homeboy, bro. Like, I wouldn't feel... Look at this nigga, bro. No disrespect to Kodak. But I'm just saying, look at, bro. You feel me? Like, I don't know what you thinking, bro. I need to know my friends got... You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I don't, you know what I'm talking about? Like, Kodak don't look like he all the way there, bro. He look evil. You feel me? Do a super gremlin music video and the whole time by reacting to the video kodak acted very strange due to how high he was who is your boy zias hey, look at him bro look at kodak these two niggas on the sideline look friendly you know what I'm saying? I, I, I kick it with them bro let's go let's go hoop you know what I'm saying? Let's go get on little hoes over there this nigga happy he cheesing kodak looks like i don't know bro like i killed him. <laughs> these niggas said the wrong thing i stabbed this nigga in the neck yeah, I can build him, man. Tired. Tired as Nah, tired. That's what I see. Okay, okay. Uh. Like, tired like he dead. Mm. You feel me? Tired like he dead. Look at Kodak looking at him. Man, I'm scared of Kodak, guy. And they dead like flies. Flies like flies everywhere. Hey, dead. I would have ended it. It would have been done. It would have been done. They looked at each other like flies, like me and you, bro. Like me and you, we dead, bro. Like we, we, we around this nigga. He the big fly. We dead, like. Zias and B. Lou were confused with how Kodak was acting. In the whole video, Kodak was itching and twitching very badly. And fans instantly knew that something was off due to how he was moving. A lot of people don't know. That's for your that's for your uh your Instagram name comes. Yeah, look, because they ain't never get 1K. Okay. I got tatted on me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. On me. So like this is like one of them ones like that I like even like Kodak was nodding off the whole time. And you could tell he needed help. I think Y'all ain't seen nothing yet, I promise. But things only got worse because a few months later, Kodak went live on Instagram. And the live was very disturbing and emotional because the whole time on live, Kodak kept nodding off and was basically almost dead due to how high he was off fence. And later, in 2023, Kodak did the same again and went live, tweaking on Instagram Live. What the hell is the camera, bro? Yeah, that angle is scary, bro. Like, what, what, bro, bro, listen to me. I'm a videographer, bro. Where is the camera when bro talking to that camera on the floor, bro? That shit is spooky as hell. And where is he at? Man. Nobody hit my 
my lawyer, nobody ain't hit me, nobody ain't sent him emails and put no hazard alert, like, he need to come, tell him come, and none of that shit. Many of the viewers were very worried about Kodak's health. They said things like, they lace, bro, and why are they filming? And due to these lives, Kodak was arrested and forced to take a drug test. And he tested positive for... Watch every game every Sunday with NFL Sunday Ticket and YouTube TV. Get YouTube's biggest offer of the year and save up to $215. And we're back in third quarter planning. Adam is quarterbacking this project, and she is looking pretty tough. The positive for Fent in the system. But after being released on bond, he had an emotional breakdown on live. After a fan told him to stay in jail so he could sober up. What kind of person are you? This one, you need to go back to jail and sober up, yak, for real, for real, man. Thankfully, this time, after getting out of jail, Kodak has sobered up and is in much better condition. But Kodak isn't the only rapper who had a huge drug problem because Youngboy had fans worried about him as well in late 2023 after he was crying for help on Instagram because YB randomly posted a picture of his new tattoo on IG that says help. Then, not long after that, Youngboy uploaded a picture of him and his cat on Instagram with the caption saying he's doing over 20 Zans a day and needs help. He then posted a few more pics with tons of pills in his mouth and him laying by pills looking dead. And it was pretty emotional because fans could instantly tell that YB was going through something and needed help. Now, let's move on to Chicago rapper. No, we ain't going to speed pass. He ain't being a young boy that fast, boy. You didn't win a whole segment about Kodak, but nah. Bro, first of all, bro, why are you taking 20 Zans, bro? Are you trying to overdose? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, bro, I be feeling like what is going on in the industry that these niggas be really trying to kill themselves, bro? And then they be telling me, like, the industry, really, these niggas really be broke. You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 or they just be real life miserable, bro, that they just only want to fill their body up with drugs, bro. Like, dog, that's crazy to me, bro. NBA Youngboy did a whole, I mean, he was always smoking and shit, but 20 Zans, bro. Man, you might want to go pick a graveyard. Go pick a headstone, tombstone, bro. Butter, because Butter is known for doing a lot of interviews, telling the stories about the Chicago drill scene. And he recently broke down crying when talking about his sister, K.I., saying how he'd rather her to be fighting for her life right now than be in a grave. Fighting for her life, gang, they'll be dead. Every day I wish, like, why the thing ain't come lock her up, gang? Like, why y'all ain't come lock this girl up, gang? What? Every day I wish, why the cops ain't come lock his sister up? I ain't gonna lie, though, but if y'all know y'all research about uh, Kai, she was a hit her. Every day I be like, I rather out to the grave because I be taking care of Quan and them phones. Shandy, like I be every day for I be on the phone, with my little brother, them phone on two for I be talking to them for a day. I be like, well, I wish this was my little sister I was talking to for on the phone on two grave. For I wish this was Kyra. I wish I was laughing with my sister for. I wish I was sending my sister this money. I wish I was sending my sister these pictures of me at these interviews on these platforms. I wish I was showing Kyra this. On two for that hurt my soul every. Every day, every day, every day, every day. On Tuesday, like, and a lot of people don't understand that because a lot of time everybody think a lot of be facade. A lot of a lot of people don't even go okay. because his sister Ki lost her life on April 11th, 2014. Because on that day, Ki made a huge mistake and tweeted out her location for everyone to see, including her ops. She was walking down the street with two friends who were headed over to the studio to celebrate Boss Trail's birthday until a gunman hopped out of a car, flagged bystanders to get out of the way, and started firing at K.I. and her friends. Her two friends ended up getting hit, and K.I. was hit nine times in the chest, neck, and jaw. After getting hit, she stumbled to a nearby home where she'd lay on some steps and take her last breath. And K.I. isn't the only person close to FBG Butter that he's lost due to the gang war. Because he also lost FBG Duck, who was a close friend of his. So, not too long after losing FBG Duck, Butter went live, letting everyone know that he's a shattered person due to everything he's been through in the streets. I'm a shattered person, folk. My sister gone, folk. Like, every day I gotta wake up with this shit. Every day I gotta wake up to this shit. Like, y'all, a lot of y'all, y'all be your... Y'all sit around, watch us, and y'all have y'all opinions of us, for, but y'all don't even understand the pain that we go through, she like, y'all don't even understand for my soul hurt. FBG Duck died after dropping a very disrespectful diss song, in which he dissed a ton of dead O-Block members. Not even a full month after Duck dropped the diss, dead 
He was out shopping in the Gold Coast neighborhood, which is a wealthy and safe place in the city. But while they were walking down the street, two cars pulled up and four shooters hopped out and started sending shots at Duck. Duck got hit in the chest, groin, and neck, and unfortunately died later that day. As soon as the news broke, rumors started flying that dudes from Moblock were behind the hit. And all of Duck's ops were happy about his death. But two months later, yeah, one of the craziest deaths happened in the rap scene on November 6, 2020. Wando Rondo was hanging outside of a hookah lounge in Atlanta when Vine and his crew pulled up on him. And Vine started throwing hands. Seconds later, seconds later, after Vine sparked a huge brawl, both sides started letting off shots. And Vine ended up getting hit by Quando's homie, Lil Tim. It was a tragic situation that shocked the whole rap scene. While this took place, Lil Durk was on IG Live the whole time. And after fans heard about the news, they rushed to Durk's live to let him know that Vine had just lost his life. At first, Durk was on live turning up. But after he saw the comments about Vine, you could see his whole mood change. And he instantly ended the live. It was pretty emotional. Man, I thought you was a dude. I ain't got nowhere to go. I shot up everywhere they want. You know who can get it back in blood. We ain't mad, it's good. Shout out to Durk. And Vine's death started a huge beef between NBA Youngboy's crew and Dirk's crew. Especially with all the diss tracks, both of the rappers started dropping towards each other. And this beef also put a huge target on Quando Rondo's back. Quando was with his crew at a gas station in LA when three dudes pulled up and started letting off shots. At first, everyone thought Quando got hit, but he actually avoided getting shot. Unfortunately, his homie Lil Bab was tragically shot and killed. The police say it was a targeted hit. Then, an emotional video of the scene started going around online that showed Quando screaming while the cops pulled his homie out of the black truck they were riding in. Shots fired. A fight taken to the streets in this chaotic scene. The ending of a shooting that started in Los Angeles, California. Sheriff's deputies pulling out a man who had been shot in an SUV. No! Savannah rapper Quando Rondo, a passenger in that... The clip is pretty emotional since Quando witnessed one of his day one homies lose their life right in front of his eyes. But Quando Rondo isn't the only rapper who lost a love. Man, that shit's sad, bro. You feel me? Like, damn! What's going on out here, bro? That, hey, that's that's tough. You feel me? All these passing away is tough, bro. Cause all these people are talented, bro. But man, bro, for you to pull out, for you and your day one homie to be riding, bro, and they hit your car up, knowing that they was aiming for you, bro, and your partner get hit. Man, he got to live with that for the rest of his life, bro. That's a tough pill to swallow, bro. Y'all hear the pain, bro? Y'all see the pain? He's screaming and shit, like, man, what? Right in front of their own eyes. Because the same happened with Quavo since he watched Takeoff lose his life on November 1st, 2022. Quavo and. Now, this one was crazy, bro, because this happened in my city, bro. You feel me? Like, this one was like, bro, I just don't understand. You know, I'm going to speak my little opinion on. They say, bro, they say Takeoff wasn't even. Oh, he wasn't even doing shit. You feel me? Like, he was just there. You feel me? Like, he ain't had nothing to do with that. Takeoff chilling. He cool. He calm. He collect. So I don't know what the f I don't know what well, I don't know, bro. I was shooting dice at the bowling alley in Houston when the fight broke out and someone started shooting. Unfortunately, Takeoff got hit and he was tragically pronounced dead at the scene. TMZ leaked the 911 call where dispatchers were talking about what happened. Apparently, someone in the building next to the bowling alley called 911 and reported that they heard shots going off. In another video, you could hear Quavo on the phone with 911 asking them what they needed to do so they could save Takeoff. Footage from the scene also shows Quavo standing over Takeoff, trying to save him before he passes. And Takeoff's death was a very emotional moment in the rap scene. At first, Quavo was silent about it, but decided to open up on the situation a year later. He let interviewers know that he's still processing the death of Takeoff, especially since it happened in front of his own eyes. So I look at this as me being alive. I have to do this job and make sure everybody aware that losing my nephew, you can lose, you could be in the same position. It's a tough thing knowing that we separated and knowing I'm not gonna see him again on this earth, but it's all, it's, it's, it's cool. Offset also had words about Takeoff's death, since he's also part of the Migos. Because before Takeoff's funeral, Offset made a post on Instagram saying, the pain you left me with is unbearable. My heart is shattered and I have so many things to say, but I can't find the words to say. Offset also gave a speech at Takeoff's funeral, which was a very emotional moment for rap, since fans never expected the Migos to win this way. Okay, take the originator. He the originator of that folk. He changed the music. Yeah. 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 Lord, give us the strength, 
Just give me some, give us some strength and family, everybody. Give us some strength. Now, let's move on to Lil Dump from the NBA camp because he had a pretty disturbing and emotional moment during an interview with No Jumper where he kept throwing up due to how many pills he was on. Anything in particular stand out? Bro, why do niggas take pills, bro? You feel me? Let me talk to, to y'all real quick, bro. Bro, what's the point? Why, 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 why are niggas out here popping pills, bro? Smoke your weed, you feel me? But why are niggas popping pills? I don't understand that. You feel me? Like, what? Fans in Adam22 were concerned about Lil Dump's health after seeing this interview. Since it clearly seems like he needs some help and is going through something. Because Lil Dump didn't even want to talk about why he puked on the interview. What just happened? Something deep in like that, you know. I'd rather not talk about it. I can talk to you about the person that as a person, you know what I'm saying? But some of you know things deep in life. But I'm just talking about you puking or like the fact that you're kind of drunk, right? No, I ain't drunk. I'm sober. You're sober? No alcohol. That's not what's in that cup. I just kind of assumed it was alcohol. What? Oh, okay. So what are you going through right now? I'm going to tell you why I don't like bro, the white dude, bro. I think his name Adam22 or whatever. Didn't he just tell you he didn't want to talk about it on air, bro, on your show? You feel me? But you're going to keep asking the same question so he can talk about it on your show, bro. I really don't like dude. You feel me? Like, I don't like his, his show, how he be talking to people or none of that, bro. I just don't. I ain't, I ain't a fan. Mm -hmm. Deep things. You trying to get clean? Hmm? You trying to get clean? Get clean? Off of some other... Not long after this interview, Lil Dump was featured in another YouTube video where he tells a girl he does more drugs than she could ever imagine. Why are you standing like that? Stand up, shit. You gotta be louder, like. I do more drugs than me you too. could ever imagine. That's not okay. I know. Then, on April 23rd, 2024, Lil Dump was taken to the hospital for unfortunately taking the wrong drugs. And you can tell that Dump really needs help. What is the man? The, only the meatloaf on top of that I ain't lying She's about the best food I got here So far and Yeah, I'm in this Calm for them So hopefully, Dump gets the help needed Before it's too late Because Memphis rapper Big Scar Couldn't get help before it was too late because Big Scar faced several traumatic experiences in his life, including being shot and suffering a serious car accident. And out of nowhere, on December 22nd, 2022, one of Scar's family members broke the news that Scar had accidentally overdosed on pills at his girlfriend's house. Many fans didn't know what Scar was going through, but after deeper research, they found emotional IG lives where you could tell that Scar was going through something from how he was acting. Yeah. I don't play, y'all. TJ because he shocked the rap game back in June 2022 when he got shot seven times during a robbery in New Jersey. He was sitting in a car with two of his homies until someone walked up to the car and tried to rob him. Shots started going off and TJ ended up getting hit. It didn't look like TJ was going to make it out alive. He was unconscious for a long time and no one knew if he was going to wake back up. But two months after he went down, he eventually woke back up and hopped on IG to thank everyone for the support. Hey, what's going on, y'all? It's your boy TJ, man. I'm just checking in with y'all. I just want to say thanks for the love. Thanks for the support. I've been looking at the DMs, you know what I'm saying, the comments and everything else. And I feel love. You know what I'm saying seven shots. It was, it was tough, you know. Most people don't survive it, but I'm here. Here for a reason. And new music coming soon. We're going to come back stronger than ever, man. Love y'all.
Thankfully, DJ survived getting hit seven times. But let's talk about Juice World now. Because Juice World was going crazy when he came into the rap game. And Juice was very open about his drug problem. Fans knew that Juice was on drugs, but not insanely bad. Until Juice completely went to sleep during an interview due to how high he was. Describe that single and that track that we're playing right now. Bro, you too high, man. I don't, like, nigga, what? Now, I don't do drugs. You feel me? So, I don't know. But for you to get like this, bro, you fell asleep anywhere, bro. I had a partner, bro, I swear. Bro, the nigga used to stumble, barely stand up, had to lean him over like a little rocking chair, nigga, always. You know what I'm saying? And he couldn't talk. You know what I'm saying? Nigga, go to sleep. Who is this nigga partners, bro? You feel me? Like, bro, that's what I don't be understanding. Like, you got the wrong people around you. You feel me? Like, bro, if I know my partner do pills and eat pill burgers and shit like that, bro. Hey, bro, you know we got an interview to go to, right? Okay. You on them pills? All right, bet. We're going to cancel this interview before you get out here and make yourself look stupid. Like, when he fell asleep, I would have been like, hey, bro, stop asking questions. Cut the cameras off. Man, bro, 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 high as hell. He high as a kite. Give me, give me a little bit one on lucid, on lucid dreams. Describe that track to me. Oh, uh, um, my apology. Uh, Things only continue to get worse because on December eighth, two thousand nineteen, Juice left LA to head home to Chicago. However, police had been tipped off that the private plane taking Juice and his crew to the airport was already bringing a lot of illegal items like weapons and drugs. So the police were waiting when the plane arrived, and they jumped on board to do a search. Juice got freaked out by what they were going to find on him, so he swallowed a bunch of perks and hid them. And while the cops were searching, Juice ended up having a seizure. They suspected that it was due to an opioid overdose, which was correct. And Juice's death hit the rap scene hard, and it was a very emotional moment for a lot of rappers. Boosie was pissed and blamed the pilot for Juice's death. Who told my people they had guns on the plane? You shouldn't What? You the one made them people come search the plane. That's why he swallowed the rat. Snitches. It's a worldwide epidemic. Snitch. Juice World's manager, Lil Bibby, couldn't say much about Juice when DJ Vlad asked him about him. Instead, he just held back tears when talking about attending Juice's funeral. He said, man, I miss how stuff used to be, man, in the beginning. He said, you gotta start coming. But if you enjoyed this video, click. Damn, Lil Bibby was Juice World manager, bro. That's, hey, man, shout out to Lil Bibby, man. That's, hey, for real, that's big ups, man. But look, check this out, man. It's sad that a lot of black people die, bro, you know what I'm saying, or dying, or killing each other, you know what I'm saying, to some stupid shit. Really, man, we're going to call it what it is, man. It's, it's a lot of stupid shit, bro. You feel me? A lot of shit that can be avoided, bro. And then on top of that, it's a lot of shit that's going on with people that's already been made. You feel me? Like, people that already got the fame, success, the money, the cars, the jewelry, the girls, whatever you want to talk about, bro, they got it. You feel me? And then you playing with it. You know what I'm saying? And then there's average Joes like us, like you and I. You feel me? Got a kill to be in that position, bro. You feel me? And it's like, y'all taking that shit for granted, bro. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know, bro. They say, you know what I'm saying? The money changed people, bro. You know what I'm saying? So I can't sit there and speak on that situation. But I do want to say everybody in this video that is still alive, bro. I pray that y'all get some help. You feel me? And shit, for the people that passed away in this video, shit, rest in peace to a family. Condolences, man. But until the next video, man, Drake 100K. We all stay safe, stay blessed.